Okay, what I hoped you learned uh, from the prior two videos is something ultimately very simple. Glass is, uh, a lens is not strictly about glass and a metal container. Um, glass is evil. Silicon dioxide, it's a semiconductor. Light is a coaxial circuit, longitudinal dielectric and transverse electrical magnetic components. See, glass is a semiconductor and light is a circuit. Gee, does that mean that a lens has to be designed like an electrical circuit and not strictly based upon refractive indexes and aspherical elements and lenses? Well, yes, that's the case. That's why Nikon and Zeiss and every other lens manufacturers in the world dope their glass. Why is it doped? Well, to change the uh, preferable uh, chromatic aberration correction from the near end and the far end spectrum of light. Gee, why, Wally? Well, that's because lanthanum oxide, niobium oxide, zirconium, titanium, calcium, and the rest, they change the dielectric permittivity and the magnetic permeability of this crap that's a semiconductor, silicon dioxide, glass, such that it allows for the designed manufacturer specifications, transmission of light through these many elements, whether they're four elements, five elements, but glass is ultimately evil, okay? Gla what does that mean? Okay, something that pisses me off, and, and, and it, it shouldn't be, it's just people that are talking out of their assholes. They've only owned, like, how many, how many, I've been shooting for 20 years. Well, how many lenses have you owned or used? Well, I've, I've owned maybe 20 lenses. Uh, and this lens right here, yeah, it's the best lens. Well, how the hell do you know? Well, because I've been shooting for 20 years, and, uh, I've owned 20 some lenses and this is the best of them. Well, that doesn't mean a damn thing! And uh, these people are talking out of their asses. They say, well, you know, I don't know what this 3D pop is that you're talking about, and I, I don't know what, you know, this uh, micro contrast uh, shit is, uh, but I think you're talking out of your ass. I mean, this is what these people on these photography boards are talking about. And people in photography, you, photography magazines are nothing but lies. Do you know why? Because every photography magazine you pick up is 60% ads. Most of which are from Sigma. And you know damn well that's the case. I'm not pimping anything. No one's got their hand up my ass to promote anything. Let's just get to the facts here. Let's talk about something you won't read about in any photography magazine, any photography blog. You know, these idiots. They're idiots. Now, like I said, if you want to be an artist, you don't have to know a damn thing about what the hell is this yellow pigment made out of. Well, who cares? If you're a good artist, nobody gives a crap. I like that painting because he uses a yellow paint that's made out of uh, uh, the speckled uh, ass feathers of the now extinct titty bird. You know, <laughs> it's the same thing with photography. You know, somebody doesn't buy your print based upon what sort of lens you. And it's like, it's a great print. It's a great photograph. You made great art. That's all that matters. Yes, that is true. You don't have to know this crap. But it's kind of neat to know. But if you refute that this is the case, well, you can kiss my ass. Because it is the truth. Lenses are designed as electrical circuits. That's why this glass is doped. That means what they add to the glass to change the dielectric uh, permittivity and the magnetic permeability of this glass. But all glass is evil. What does that mean? I'm talking about 3D depth rendering. Some people call it Zeiss Pop or Zeiss 3D effect. Zeiss has no claim on this. They do on many of their lenses, but Zeiss makes some real dog lenses too. Woof! Woof! Um, their 21mm is a dog. Their 25mm is a dog. Um, they got too much. Their 35mm f1.4 is pretty much, well, it's, it's kind of a dog. It's got too much damn glass in it. Now, only a few of the elements are ED doped, but ED doping only goes so far. ED doping is actually the worst thing that you can do to glass. Obviously, it helps a lot with chromatic aberration, and nobody likes chromatic aberration. Nobody does. You can correct for it, obviously, in Photoshop. Extremely flat uh, images uh, that are very sharp are very desired since it's used in telescopic lenses and viewfinder elements and perfect for fast focusing on long objects. Because, by the way, the more sharp your lens is, the better and faster, depending obviously on how fast the lens is naturally to focus. But the quicker your camera can see what sharpness is or is not, depending on how sharp the lens is, the faster it can focus. Okay, so you have a lens with X potential of a focusing speed because it's damn fast, like the 7300 uh, VRG. 
but if it can't focus fast enough, then it doesn't matter how fast the lens is. So obviously having a sharp lens is very beneficial for many reasons. Um, however, uh, for most of photography, other than, you know, shooting really long far off stuff or use of telescopes, because everything on a telescope, you know, is way the hell out there light years away, so who gives a damn about depth? It doesn't matter. I mean, it's all the way the hell out there. Same thing with landscapes. You know, you're shooting something way the hell out there. Doesn't matter. However, in most photography, you're shooting Joe Blow three feet away, and you got a background, and you have this 3D pop effect. And remember, there's two different types of uh, depth. There's translational, a perceptual depth that is uh, due to tonal gradation of the spectrum. It's important for low light and uh, close tonal foregrounds and backgrounds. The higher the micro contrast, for example, the better the perception of detail. Now, there's rendered depth, which has to do with binocular disparity, parallax. You could think of holographic effect. Okay, no, no, a photograph, the same thing as a hologram, is a flat two-dimensional image. So where does the holography come from? Well, you first you have to know how a hologram is created. The beam is split up, you have a reference beam, and you have a reflected beam. The same thing in a very crude sense applies to this quote-unquote 3D pop effect. Or they call it the Zeiss effect. Obviously Nikon, like their 20mm 1.8G is really good. Uh, some of the Nikon uh, 50 millimeters and the 85mm. And Nikon has plenty of lenses that pop. They're low element count lenses, like this one. This is a radioactive lens, it's dope with thorium oxide. But uh, it's got very low element count, the 200mm f4. Got a tremendous pop. A lot of you people have been shooting for years and years and years. A lot of you have uh, emailed me back going, Holy crap, I've been shooting for years, and you know, I thought my crappy zoom lens was awesome. And then I bought this old, cheap-ass, uh, five-element Nikkor lens you recommend, and all of a sudden, for some reason, my images are three-dimensional. Holy crap, why didn't somebody tell me about this years ago? Holy crap, this is... I mean, I've heard that so many times from so many of you people. Yeah, glass is evil! It is! doesn't matter if it's a Zeiss lens, or a really expensive Nikkor lens, or a Sigma fart lens. Sigma always has too much glass in their lenses, by the way. Always! <sighs> glass is evil. Okay? Silicon dioxide is a semiconductor. Light is a coaxial circuit! It alters the light. Okay, you can have an incredibly sharp image. Like from my Tamron 70 to 200. I love that lens. It's damn fast autofocus. 7200 BC Tamron. Love the hell out of the lens. But the images it produces are flat. The rendered depth is flat. Anybody else out there that says that's BS, they have their head up their ass, you're dead wrong, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. People that have owned a lot of contacts and Leica lenses and modern lenses, they know what the hell I'm talking about. They agree with me. They know it's a fact. These people that have owned 10 or 15 lenses in their life, most of which are crappy mid-range zooms, like, I don't know what you're talking about, and you have your, you're, you're just a fat tattooed freak, and you got all this mystical BS that you're talking about. These lenses. No, I'm not. This is a fact. It's irrefutable. What do you think people are talking about? Zeiss Pop or the 3D effect or some of the old low element count? What do you hell you think I've had? No less than a thousand people email me or comment me and go, I've been shooting for 20 years with these mid-range zooms that came with my camera and I bought this crappy old lens that you recommend that's got five elements in it. And holy crap, my lenses all of a sudden they pop. They're fantastically uh, uh, neatly depth rendered. Yeah, that's the reason. Glass is evil. Doesn't matter how well the lens is made. Silicon dioxide is a semiconductor that changes the coaxial nature of the circuit of light. Binocular disparity. Dielectric permittivity. Magnetic permeability. People that are into optics don't know a damn thing about electricity or, or electrical theory or anything about field theory. Okay? Light is an electrical circuit. Irrefutable! 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 Glass is a semiconductor. Irrefutable! This doped glass by every lens manufacturer on Earth has added certain elements to their ED glass, whether it's extra low dispersion or super low dispersion or ultra low, doesn't make any difference. They add this stuff to change the chromatic aberration, the convergence, the near and far in the spectrum of the light so that it changes it for ultimately desired effects by those at the top end that want the lens to look a certain way. But this has to do with dielectric permeability and magnetic uh, dielectric permittivity and magnetic permeability, i.e. 
changing this lens to have a certain electrical property for the passage of light to make it look a certain way. Focal length, of course, plays a factor. The f-stop, the actual aperture, obviously plays a factor, but I'm ignoring those because while they're certainly important in the effect, the actual depth, depth of field, obviously, from the aperture, we all know that. Okay, we're not talking about the depth of field relative to the aperture. I'm talking about all things being equal. A 35 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter lens with four elements here um, at f8, and a 35 millimeter uh, lens at f8 over here with like 12 elements. All things being equal, same focal length, same aperture. We're talking about the same thing, all things being equal. So that's why we're ignoring aperture and uh, focal length. We're talking about all things being equal. We're talking about strictly about the glass and the electrical circuit that makes up the totality of the lens. Whew. Why am I yelling at the camera? Because stuff like this pisses me off. Nobody gets it. Um, anyway, ED glass uh, lens also performs better in uh, terms of light transmissions, which make for better focusing and uh, brighter images in your viewfinder. Obviously, that's the case. Um, as I mentioned, there are two different types of depth. You have perceptual, translational depth. Perceptual depth has to do with the tonal gradation of the spectrum. Very important for low light and close tonal foregrounds. That's also why Zeiss, which has, uh, they're not king of, well, they're pretty much the king of in most of their lenses. Some of them are real dogs. Um, that's why if you're going to be a black and white shooter, you have uh, micro contrast, which is intertonal transmission, maximum intertonal transmission. If you're going to be a black and white shooter, you want to be shooting Zeiss or some Nikkor lenses because you have the micro contrast, which is supreme, that really makes uh, the black and white shots that you do pop. Okay, what does pop mean? Well, we've got two different varieties of depth. All things being equal, including focal length and uh, aperture, okay? We're ignoring those, even though those play an important part. We're talking about all things being equal between two different lenses here. The second one is the binocular disparity or depth uh, from low element count prime lenses with a foreground and background disparity that layers and separates out objects with distance within the composition of the shot taken. Um, you could refer this as, to this also as the holographic effect. You know, hologram is a two-dimensional image. Well, do you know how a hologram is created? 99.9999% of people have no idea how the hell a hologram is created. Well, it's binocular disparity. It has to do with a, a, a primary beam is split up. You have a reference beam and you have the, 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 uh, the second part of the beam that's reflected off the object. That's actually, both of them are projected onto the film. And uh, those two together, once you process the film, you actually have this three-dimensional image, okay, on the film. One of the neat things about a holographic positive, too, by the way, well, I don't want to discuss that right now, but you can actually cut it up and project the laser through a small corner of the entire negative, and you'll see the entire image in the small corner. So you could have a picture of a person here, and you could take the holographic uh, negative and cut out a small corner down here project the laser through it and the entire image is actually present within that very small corner which is fascinating in and of itself but that's a discussion for something else um, let's talk about resolution versus lens contrast then I'll do another little uh, demonstration for you uh, on further explanation and uh, on uh, the nature of silicon dioxide and dielectric uh, capacitance okay